hope that when people come to see Così Fan Tutte, they're going to have a good time because this show is meant to have a good time. There are two couples and then two outsiders who are kind of scheming. And basically, Don Alfonso is looking at these young men who are so happy because they're so in love and they have, you know, their, their girlfriends and everything. And Don Alfonso is like, yeah, you, you know nothing. And you think you have it and you think it's, it's set in stone and these ladies will be here for you forever. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true. And the boys, of course, have pride. So they make a pact with this older man and then they have to do what he says. And then he concocts this plot where they have to disguise themselves, pretend that they're going off to war, and that these two handsome strangers just fall into the laps and the houses of these two women to see if really their fidelity will stand true or not. And so that's the premise of this whole opera. <laughs> So a cover is the opera version of being an understudy. A cover in an opera is somebody who has to prepare the role as if they were going on. So they have to prepare the music, they have to watch the staging carefully. And just in case something happens, they have to go on at a moment's notice. Because live theater is unpredictable and because we're singers, our bodies depend on our health and the environment that we're in. And so if we wake up one day not feeling the best, then it's important to have somebody just on standby to fill in just in case so that the production doesn't suffer. A harpsichord, very popular keyboard instrument in the 1700s. On this production, I am one of the coaches and I'm also the harpsichordist for the production and performances, which means that I'll be playing the what we call the recits that take place in between the musical numbers. We use them in Mozartian opera. Mozart used them and Da Ponte, the librettist, used them to move the plot forward. But of course, they're still singing, and that's where the harpsichord comes in. My job in it, as a harpsichordist for a comedy like this from Mozart, first of all, is to make sure that the singers have their, their pitch. They stay on pitch during the section, so all the modulations are being uh, controlled from the harpsichord to help them. Above and beyond that, what I do, hopefully, what I do is help with character delineation. So for instance, Rod Guilfrey is here, fantastic, singing Don Alfonso. So when he's singing, you'll hear me, I'll gravitate towards the lower register. Whereas for Caitlin and Kaylee and uh, Diana, the two sisters and Despina, I'll usually come up to the middle register to match their voice type. Or I'll do exactly the opposite for comic effect. Literally, we are like in between two worlds. There's the first world, which is the orchestra world, and that goes on in the pit. We actually do call it the pit. And then there's another world, which is like physically different and distanced from that. They can't see each other, and that's the stage. And that's where, of course, all the singers are and the decor and everything. The conductor is actually the conduit between those two worlds. And we are trying to get everyone together as harmonious and unified as possible so that the pit can play exactly with what the singers and the drama need. When we're learning the technique of conducting, we are learning to train our hands and our arms to move in patterns that are recognizable so that orchestras can read our beat patterns. That's what we call like how we move the coordination. Also, if you want to slow something down or speed something up, you have to be able to communicate that and you can't use words. So you have to be able to use your body language in an effective way so that the orchestra in real time will understand exactly what it is that you're saying. And that can't be improvised. You know, there, there are techniques that you study for that. During rehearsals, we're listening, we're diagnosing what's not working, what's going wrong, what is the problem? Can we fix the problem? What is the solution? So we're doing all of that in real time. We're also helping people to remember you know, simple things, but that are so essential, like listen to each other, or let's have you and you play because actually you guys had the same line. And then during the performance, what we're really trying to do is also transmit energy to people. That's kind of the mystical 
mystical, you know, process of it and the thing that still fascinates me, I think I'll be like 100 years old and I'll still be fascinated with it, is that if you can channel your energy and give it in such a way so that someone else can receive it and be touched by that and react to that and they give their energy, which has been transformed to other people, then that's really what we're doing at the end of the day. So there are many different levels.